Today, I wanna to talk about personal finance and a book that you need to read when it comes to the subject. This is the index card, why personal finance doesn't have to be complicated by Helene Olin and Harold Pollack, published in 2016, so pretty recent. And um, this is a book that I highly recommend when it comes to personal finance because in my experience, uh, one or two things tends to happen. The first one is that a topic is very scary. And a lot of people tend to just completely ignore the topic. And eventually, and it will happen, there will be a, a crisis, whether it comes from your um, not having the right amount of savings, when it comes to retirement, when it comes to insurance, something will happen. And by avoiding the topic of personal finance because it is scary and it is complicated, there will be disaster down the road. It just will. The second thing is, is that um, another behavior that happens is that people will say, well, hey, I get that it's important, but it is way too complicated. So let me just go out and run with a financial advisor that can manage everything for me. And that can turn out well, but it can also turn out bad because if you don't understand what is happening, you can be a victim to things that you don't need. You can be paying higher fees. It's a lot of the same things that if, you don't, if you're not educated, if you don't understand what's occurring, then there's a possibility that um, you may not have things happen in your best interest. And then the final one that can happen sometimes is that you can be overly invested in personal finance, it's almost the extreme end where you're constantly buying and trading and moving things around and you're extremely invested. And that can be actually disadvantageous as well because the more you're moving pieces around, you may actually be hurting the overall picture. So that's why I like this book. I like this book, first of all, because um, they make it very approachable. Um, it's clearly, a marketing gimmick, the index card. It's a great way to make it fly off the shelf, um, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it because it makes the topic of personal finance approachable for the everyday person. And in particular, what the authors do is that their argument is, look, everything you know about personal finance can fit on literally an index card. And so that's what they do. At the back of the book, they summarize everything, which is what the chapters are organized as well, into the 10 rules of personal finance. Things such as rule number one, strive to save 10 to 20% of your income. Rule number two, pay your credit card balance in full every month. Rule number three, max out your 401k and tax advantage savings account, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, throughout the book. Um, and if that was the only thing that you took away from this book, in fact, if you just took this card and implemented that, that would be a success. That would automatically take you from zero to 80% of what you need to do to be confident in personal finance. Um, for those individuals that are scared, that think it's over and complicated, just do those things. If you just do those 10 things that the authors outline in the book, you will be significantly better off than you were today um, and will be prepared down the road for a crisis. That's why I think this book is a must read for so many people. The other reason I like it though, is that there is more to the book than just the marketing gimmick in the index card. Um, the authors are very established professionals in their field, um, academic in the business community. And so the rest of the book is, is filled with content, right? And it's content behind these 10 recommendations. And there's a couple I wanna talk about in particular. The first one is, the high level rule number four is never buy or sell individual stocks. And then rule number five is buy inexpensive, well-diversified index mutual funds and exchange traded funds. So let's talk about that for a second. This has been advice that um, Warren Buffett has been telling everybody for a long time. He's been telling his kids, which is, if you can do one thing with your investment portfolio, retirement, emergency, uh, separate savings account, et cetera, it is stop buying and selling individual stocks. Just stop it. And instead, get a low-cost index fund. I like Vanguard. You can get a low-cost index fund that tracks the S&P index. You'll see that the fee percent of total assets can be extremely low, extremely low, point. 0.1%, point, you know, just really low fees because what the index fund is doing is just tracking the overall return of the total stock market. And Warren Buffett has been preaching this for years and the book makes this essential thesis of what they're talking about. 
So it takes this hugely complicated field of investing and just simplifies, which is to stop, get a couple low cost index funds, and then leave it alone. And I'll give you a personal note why I think this is also good advice. I remember being in business school and being in business school, sitting in a finance class. And this was after I had spent a career before business school working in Wall Street and private equity. And so this related to me well. Um, but doing the, the capital asset pricing models and looking at the alphas and the betas and the volatility and coming to the conclusion that you just don't know what's going to happen with an individual stock. Things rise and fall for things that you can never predict. And so your best way to minimize overall volatility in your investment portfolio is to do just that, to create a portfolio and invest in something that is as diversified as possible. You won't get these extreme highs, but you likely won't get the extreme lows. Instead, you're going to be someplace in the middle and you're going to have a nice steady state of return, which over the history of the stock market has been, what, plus 10%? which is a pretty good return for your money. Doing the math of that in business school made a lot of sense to me. But the second thing that took it away, the more human element is being in business school, you're often surrounded with people whose sole goal is to go into investment banking or finance fields when you get out of school. Which means that these there are people out there that are spending 60 to 80 hours a week doing nothing but analyzing stocks and companies and financial investments. How are you, just the average person, going to beat them? If you're working your normal job that isn't in finance, raising a family, doing hobbies, et cetera, if you're not investing 60 to 80 hours a week doing that, you can't beat them. It just doesn't work. And so the best advice, which this book really preaches, is do that, which is that we invest solely in diversified index funds. But what the book does further is that it takes it to the next level. So those that are more sophisticated when it comes to investing may ask, well, how do you invest? Which particular funds do you go to? Um, and in the book, they do a really good job of breaking down your allocation, your portfolio between stocks and bonds based upon your age. There's a really simple formula for that. And within stocks, how do you break it between large stocks, mid stocks, international and emerging things, and even give you an opportunity to play a little bit in there. And so you could just at one level, do what the book recommends, diversify and diversify index fund, put all your money in S&P 500, you're probably gonna be okay. You're gonna be a lot better than you were today. But then you can take it to the next level, which is then start building your own unique portfolio between stocks and bonds, and then breaking stocks and bonds down to individual funds. And the book makes it really easy to follow through with that. And in fact, you can do this, and instead of investing in these target retirement funds that you see from Vanguard, the 2045, the 2055 funds, you can instead do something like this, and you can build your own target retirement fund and save half, 50% or more on the fees because you're doing the work yourself, and all it takes is a few minutes to read the book and understand. So that's one reason that I like it at a deeper level. The other one is that there's two other chapters which are really good at providing more content behind just the marketing gimmick of the index card. Um, that is when it comes to insurance and in particular talking about why insurance is something that um, you need to really think about in terms of your portfolio and that you really do a good job helping you understand that the purpose of insurance in a lot of ways is to help protect your net worth. And so then it reframes the conversation around how much liability insurance do you need on your car and how much insurance do you need on top of that if you take into account what your net worth might be. They introduce the concepts like an umbrella policy, which a lot of people might actually need that they're not aware that they have. And it also gives just real sound advice around the idea of why high deductibles for a lot of these insurance policies are a good idea because the probability of executing and using these things may not be as high as you might think. And then finally, a chapter which um, I just think is great is the idea around if you do decide to get a financial advisor, what type of financial advisor should you go for? And I think this is an important chapter because you know, I feel like I'm reasonably astute when it comes to understanding personal finances and the way money in the economy works. Um, but I find the whole business of how personal advisor, personal advisors work difficult and complicated to understand. How do they get compensated, their fee structure, 
what do you have to give them in order for them to give you the advice? And I think that's very difficult. And I think what the book does is it does a really good job explaining how does that business work? How do you best interact with professionals in that business? Because they are very smart and sophisticated people who have a lot of knowledge when it comes to investing, but you wanna make sure that you're paying for what you actually need. And a lot of times that just comes down to understanding this base level knowledge. And then you have a better sense of what do I need help with? What am I willing to pay for? And what's a reasonable price for those different services? Um, that's a far better strategy than walking into a top financial uh, broker's house, Merrill Lynch, Schwab, et cetera, and just say, manage my money. Um, there are better ways you can go do that. And I think a simple read and a real simple synopsis of this book can empower you with that information that you need to, um, to be far more confident when it comes to your personal finances, make far better decisions for you and your family, and just avoid all the unnecessary hassle that and, and, and stress that can happen that will eventually happen to you no matter what. Um, but if you have a just a basic plan, it can get you started and I think find a lot of value. So great book, check it out.